Hey everybody, welcome to my channel, Permission to Live in the End with Lisa Scott. It has been a minute and I thank you so much, everyone who has subscribed to this channel, who will subscribe to this channel. Uh, this is Permission to Live in the End and, and it's inspired by Neville Goddard. And I was having a conversation um, with my husband this morning and I said, you know what, this is another story that I have not shared um, on my channel, which I am going to share today. Um, so I don't know exactly what I'm going to say. I'm just going to let it flow as it's flowing. But the premise of the entire story is to let you know that it is always you on this manifesting journey as a master manifester, as we all are. Um, it, it, it's always you. We're always manifesting. It's always you. That's it. You are the uh, authoring power, as Neville Goddard uh, tells us. You are the authoring power. So uh, this morning, I was talking to my husband about my journey from out of the church. And we have this conversation a lot. And just I'll preface this real quick by saying this is not about bashing the church. It's not about that at all, but it is about my personal journey and experience. Um where I began to wake up. I began to understand certain things. I began to pay attention to certain things. And this was, um, you know, within, after, uh, <laughs> you know, my, my exiting the church system and everything that went along with it. So that includes any, um, uh, worshiping of external deities or anything like that. Um, my exiting, my journey began with the exit of the church. I'm going to say it, it was a fork in the road. Uh, but, um, so without getting into all the details of my experience inside of the church, what I will say is that toward the tail end of my journey, um, I began to wake up and I began to understand certain things that I had, um, certain authority and all of that, that I had completely relinquished to the church experience process, doctrine, all of that, that I started to be, be I started to reawaken to understanding that I had done this. Um, and this process was a 12 year, uh, process of me, uh, being very, very, very into the church. Um, uh, I'm talking all my time, all of my dedication, all of it, um, until I started to wake up. Um, and I woke up right there in the church and that might be a whole nother, uh, video. I don't know if it is or it is. And I'll, I'll see how things are flowing as we, as I'm continuing to share here. But, um, uh, um, after leaving the church and beginning to process that I was not going back. I knew the day that I wasn't going back, the day that I was not, I knew that I was never going to see the, the inside of the walls of that church or any other church, um, again. But, um, and here comes my husband. I'm doing a video, babe. So don't come in. I'm doing a video. I'm, I'm doing a video. Um, so anyway, um, anyway, my husband just entered the room, so I'll wait till he exits. Not that I need to hide anything from him, but he's going to be making noise. So I don't want you to hear the noise in the background. So bye. Love you. Love you so much. <laughs> he said, yeah, whatever. Um, but anyway, um, after the, um, exiting, now I lost my place. Oh my goodness. But, um, after the exiting of the church, I began to, oh, I, I think I was saying that I knew the day that I was exiting the church that I, that I was never coming back. But as I began to process everything, these 12 years, I began to try to process. My biggest question was what just happened? Because the day that I left the church, it was like a light switch just flicked just uh, like I flicked it on or flicked it off, whichever way you want to look at it. That particular day I was seeing with new eyes. I was a whole nother being in an instant it felt like in an instant, 
I woke up inside of the sanctuary of the church. As I was standing there, uh, my eyes just were seeing something completely different. I, I just, I can't even begin to express to you how <laughs> I was not the same person in an instant. And as I began to process this information uh, or process what happened, my biggest question was, what just happened? How did I go from 12 years of complete uh, dedication, complete belief, complete everything that came along with it, even the struggles that were happening in my marriage at that time due to my uh, commitment of the church and all of that, which is a whole nother video. Uh, just everything that went along with this, this process was gone in an instant. Okay. It was just, it was gone in an instant and I needed to know what just happened. And as I began to process all of this, um, I started to understand ultimately that, oh, whatever my mind would have been focused on, whatever my mind would have been focused on and had that complete, um, you know, understanding, uh, the emotion, the feeling, everything that goes along with where you are concentrating your efforts and your thoughts, it wouldn't have mattered where it was or what it was. This is how the mind works. So it could have been anything and it is anything and everything. I started to understand that this is how we function as a human being. And I, um, began to understand, I would liken it to, you know, this is one of the examples that I share, uh, with my, uh, clients and, uh, cause I do, um, uh, manifest, uh, manifestation coaching. Uh, one of the things, uh, that I use as an analogy is going into a room because it's very easy for us to understand within our own homes that when you go into a particular room in your house, that room has within that room everything that is complete to that particular room. So your bedroom has, you know, uh, if, if this is what your bedroom has, your bedroom has the television, it has the lamps, it has the bed, it has windows, it has the dressers and the, and the beat, the, you know, the, the, uh, the, the beat, uh, what do you call it? The, uh, whatever this thing is, <laughs> the bench, the bench, I can't believe it. Um, Everything that is in that room belongs to that particular room. And when you shut the door, there is nothing else inside of that room, inside of your bedroom, except everything that belongs inside of the bedroom. This is, and, and everything that is outside of the bedroom is everything outside of the bedroom. So you are not occupying two spaces at the same time in terms of your ability to concentrate on something or focus your attention and energy on something. So this is what happened with me. I was inside of a belief system complete with everything that belonged with that belief system. And when I began to question and when I began to, uh, feel, you know, something other than what I was feeling at that time that I was in the church, when I began to allow, you know, myself to, um, to understand who I truly am, you know, these types of things, it caused the door, just like a bedroom, it caused me to be able to, uh, just like in the mind and a, a bedroom door, I basically was opening and cracking the doorway to see what was outside of that door. And for me, it happened in an instant when it did happen. Um, and so I share that with my, my clients because whatever belief system you have, it can be changed. 
whatever belief you are currently within that you're feeling a hindrance to your ability to do something else, be something else, it can be changed. You are the only one. So I'll go back to my story with the church. I was the authoring power the entire time, but while I was inside of the belief system that I was in, I, I did not have any power in that belief system. I mean, I had the power to keep energizing it over and over and over again, but in my mind, you know, I belonged to that belief. I belonged to what was happening. I belonged to that whole thing until I began to start asking questions and began to allow, uh, uh, allow those questions. That was like something that was inside of me that I remember saying to myself, you know what, I'm going to allow whatever, uh, questions inherently are within me. I'm going to allow those questions. I'm going to allow myself to be myself. And as I started to allow that again, I was opening a door and I was not consciously aware that that's what was happening, but that's what was happening. And the next thing you know, I was outside of that belief system and looking upon it like what in the world? But this also showed me how much power we have as human beings. And this is something that can never be taken away from me because I spent 12 years, much like many of us are spending years and years and years and years with it, within whatever the belief system is, but I was consciously aware of what happened because I asked, I asked myself the question, what just happened? And I began to be shown, um, you know, what had happened. I, I began to be shown that your mind, you thought that you needed to have that, that experience. And so you did. Um, so I just wanted to stop by and share. Well, here's the other part of this that I wanted to share also. So years and years and years. So this was back in 2011, this story that I'm sharing with you. But um, after that, of course, you know, a continuous process of understanding and uncovering and learning and searching. Um, and I'll tell you this, one of the things that I decided because it was a part of my journey also was a part of my, my understanding was because no sooner than you escape, so to speak, one belief system, there's another one waiting for you. There's another one waiting all packaged up and pretty and, and looking very familiar to the uh, belief that you just came from in a lot of instances. So I went through this process of you know, one belief system to not necessarily another belief system, but becoming attached to certain things. Like I started to learn about crystals and I started to learn about this and that and the other, and I would spend some time with this and then I would spend some time with that. But what I started to understand was, oh, so I could very easily, you know, marry myself to this belief system and shut everything else out and not have any under, understanding of anything else because I'm choosing that this in particular is the thing that has to be the thing and therefore be married to that thing. And I decided very quickly, nope, that's not happening. Nope, I'm not going to allow that to happen. So I adopted a uh, thought process or a, a belief where I said, um, Oh, I said there are, there are two types of learners. And of course there really are more than that, than this, but of myself and in my understanding at the time, I said, oh, there's two types of studiers. There's a studier that is studying to confirm that what they're saying is true. And there's the type of studier who is willing to wipe the slate clean and learn the good and the bad of everything, to learn all sides of everything in order to understand it in its complete completeness. And you have the strength to hear the good and the bad or the, you know what I mean? All the sides of it. There are some people who don't have the strength to hear all sides of any, of something. They need to believe that what it is, is what it is, is what it is, is what it is. You know what I mean? Um, so anyway, um, those are a couple of things that I adopted along uh, my journey, but it has, um, and also on that journey, I um, became acquainted with, you know, some great uh, philosophers and, and thought leaders such as, you know, uh, jo Joseph Murphy and, um, you know, uh, 
actually, I think I might need to cut the video. I don't know what just happened. Something makes me feel like this is going to shut down or something, but I'll keep going until I get an indication. Um, so Joseph Murphy, um, Dwayne, uh, Wayne Dyer, shout out to him because, uh, yep, this is going to shut down. So I'm going to shut down the video right now. I'll bring a part two to you. Love you guys. Talk to you soon.